Hello, I'm Thyroid Agents Anti-Thyroid, Iodine Solutions, and this is my autobiography. My generic name is Strong Iodine Solution Potassium Iodide. My brand name is Lugol Solution. I'm therapeutically classified as an anti-hyperthyroid and as an expectorant. I'm pharmacologically classified as an electrolyte. I'm categorized into pregnancy category B. And here is my mechanism of action. I am available in the form of solution, so I am given orally, and in this time, iodine is converted into iodide, so the effects are identical. From here, it goes to the thyroid gland. And iodide is taken up by the follicular cells by sodium iodide symporter. Now you might be wondering that iodide is an ingredient that is required for thyroid hormone synthesis. So how would providing it produce thyroid inhibitory effects? Well yes, first we need to understand something called the wolf chaikoff effect. It is an auto-regulatory phenomenon whereby a large amount of ingested iodine accurately inhibits thyroid hormone synthesis within the follicular cells, irrespective of the serum level of the thyroid-stimulating hormone. In other words, large dose of iodide or iodine decreases the release of thyroid hormone, thus decreases serum concentration of T3 and T4. The inhibitory effect of iodide is kind of paradoxical and it's yet completely understood. But what we know is, when it is available in normal concentration, it contributes in synthesis of thyroid hormones. However, when the iodide concentration is high, as what happens when we give more iodine, it produces inhibitory effects. My absorption is similar to iodinated amino acids. I enter the circulation as plasma inorganic iodide which is cleared from the circulation by the thyroid and kidney. I am metabolized in the body through a series of stages involving the hypothalamus, pituitary, thyroid gland, and blood. I am excreted by the kidney along with the urine. I am indicated as an expectorant for people with difficulty breathing, preoperative thyroidectomy, nuclear radiation protection, and to replenish iodine. I am also indicated for the management of thyrotoxic crisis, cutaneous porotrichosis, and hyperthyroidism. I am contraindicated in patients with tuberculosis, acute bronchitis, iodine hypersensitivity, or hyperkalemia. Some formulation contains sulfites, which may precipitate allergic reactions in hypersensitive individuals. Use cautiously in patients with hypocomplementamic vasculitis, goiter, or autoimmune thyroid disease. The most common adverse effect of iodine solutions is hypothyroidism. The patient will need to be started on replacement thyroid hormone to maintain homeostasis. Goiter may also develop. Other adverse effects include iodism, which is manifested by metallic taste and burning in the mouth, sore teeth and gums, diarrhea, cold symptoms, and stomach upset. Staining of teeth may also occur. Inflammation of salivary glands and periorbital edema may also happen. Other adverse effects include fever, acne form rash, and hypersensitivity reactions. Before giving me to the patient, the nurse must first assess for possible contraindications and cautions, perform a physical examination to establish baseline data before beginning therapy, monitor serum potassium levels, dilute with 1 atml of water, fruit juice or broth to reduce GI distress and disguise strong salty metallic taste, advise patient to use straw to avoid tooth discoloration. Store drug in light-resistant container because exposure to light liberates traces of free iodine. 
If crystals develop in solution, dissolve them by placing container in warm water and carefully agitating it. During treatment, the nurse must determine effectiveness of the therapy. Sudden withdrawal may precipitate thyroid storm. Maintain fluid intake when using drug as expectorant. Adequate hydration encourages optimal expectorant action. Assess the patient carefully for any potential drug-to-drug -drug interactions if given in combination with other drugs because of the drug's effects on liver enzyme systems. Monitor serum potassium levels before and during therapy. Patients taking any diuretic, especially potassium-sparing diuretics, are at risk for hypokalemia. Patients should avoid ingestion of iodized salt and shellfish. After treatment, the nurse should evaluate for any adverse effects associated with drug therapy. Monitor serum potassium levels. Review signs and symptoms of iodism with patient and instruct patient to report such symptoms. Arrange for regular follow-up to evaluate drug effects and the underlying problems. This ends my autobiography. Till next time!